Swami's father sat gloomily gazing at the newspaper on his lap. Swami rose silently and tiptoed to his bed in the passage. Granny was sitting up in her bed, and remarked, Boy, are you already feeling sleepy? Don't you want to hear a story? Swami made wild gesticulations to silence his granny, but that good lady saw nothing. So Swami threw himself on his bed and pulled the blanket over his face. Granny said, Don't cover your face. Are you really very sleepy? Swami leant over and whispered, Please, please, shut up granny. Don't talk to me, and don't let anyone call me even if the house is on fire. If I don't sleep at once, perhaps I shall die. He turned over and curled, and snored under the blanket till he found his blanket pulled away. Presently his father came and stood over him. Swami, get up, he said. He looked like an apparition in the semi-darkness of the passage, which was lit by a cone of light from the hall. Swami stirred and groaned as if in sleep. Father said, get up, Swami. Granny pleaded, why do you disturb him? Get up, Swami, said father for the third time and Swami got up. Father rolled up his bed, took it under his arm and said, come with me. Swami looked at Granny, hesitated for a moment, and followed his father into the office room. On the way he threw a look of appeal at his mother. And she said, why do you take him to the office room? He can sleep in the hall, I think. I don't think so, father said, and Swami slunk behind him with bowed head. Let me sleep in the hall, father, Swami pleaded. Your office room is very dusty and there may be scorpions behind your law books. There are no scorpions, little fellow. Sleep on the bench if you like. Can I have a lamp burning in the room? No. You must learn not to be afraid of darkness. It is only a question of habit. You must cultivate good habits. Will you at least leave the door open? All right. But promise you won't roll up your bed and go to your granny's side at night. If you do it, I'll make you the laughing stock of your school.